Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is part of our review of the MSI GTX 660 Ti Power Edition OC video card and in this part we are going to take a look at the MSI Afterburner Utility and also take a quick glance on how to overclock your 660 Ti Power Edition video card and while we're here, since the Afterburner allows you to control your fan speed, we are going to listen to the fan noise as well and uh, just a brief layout of the MSI Afterburner. You can see the graphics card. This is the default skin. You have multiple skins that you can install, download from MSI's website. You have the driver version at the top. And since this is a Power Edition video card, the, there is something called the triple over voltage feature that uh, is available. You can adjust the core voltage, memory voltage, and auxiliary voltage, which is the PLL. Uh, if you go to settings here, this is actually not the default setting, but you can Tick the unlock voltage control and unlock voltage monitoring uh, uh, option in the compatibility properties to enable that option. And while we're here in the properties, you can see that uh, you can select if you have multiple GPUs in here, you can uh, for MS or SLI, you control it there. Adjust your uh, startup options and automatic updates at the bottom. The next tab is the fan, uh, auto fan control properties where you can set a um, a chart here of how you want the fan to ramp up, customize it if you don't want to leave it at auto depending on a user and the next one is the monitoring tab here on the right side you can see the monitor that is attached you can adjust it here, all the check marks you can enable or disable it here and it will, it will stop showing on the right side you can also put them on the tray icon here at the bottom there's an option for that and there's also an option for showing it on the on-screen display you can see it will show up there in properties if you do so and you can also choose the option of logging a, to a file and the next tab is the on-screen display you can have the frames per second that shows up uh, similar to fraps you have uh, also option to toggle it, show and uh, hide it. You can bind it to a button. Also additional on-screen on display properties. You can show system time so you don't lose track of time while you're gaming. You can see the time there. You can see how long you've been playing and also you can uh, have the uh, uh, toggle on-screen display server blocking option here for compatibility in case it, your game doesn't allow it. Also, the second feature, uh, the next tab after here is the screen capture. It is a built-in screen capture feature. Uh, this is actually a neat feature to have. They also have video capture now with the latest MSI 2.2.3. You can see the version right here on the lower right side. Uh, this is actually pretty good since the MSI Afterburner is a free software and it is compatible with pretty much every video card out there. Uh, Video capture and screen capture are free utilities compared to buying something like Fraps, as mentioned. And it allow, it's uh, basically just allows you to uh, save your games and upload and share it to your friends. Also, more ad advanced options in here. You can ch change the compression, uh, quality, frame size, frame rate, and more gamma compression options. And also change, of course, where you save it. And more audio properties at the bottom and let's go back to screen capture and you can set the file types you have the uh, bitmap PNG or JPEG and the quality also the output of screenshots and where you would bind that screen sh screen capture key and the next uh, tab is a profiles tab where you can save a profile you can name a profile in here depending on your overclock also you can assign 2d and 3d profiles depending on your system. You can see it's already reading what I have saved there in those profiles, my previous overclock attempts. And the last tab here is where you can change the skin. Of course, it comes with uh, four skins in there by default. And also change your language, multilingual. As you can see, there's plenty of options there. Now let's go back to the monitoring, the fan control window. Let's disable this again. And let's go back here. As mentioned, triple over voltage, core memory voltage, memory, uh, core voltage, memory voltage, and auxiliary voltage, which is PLL. Actually, this is my uh, successful overclock here. I didn't need to touch my uh, PLL. Uh, that is basically for uh, if you want more additional power through PCIe, especially if you're an uh, advanced uh, liquid nitrogen overclocker, it can comes in really handy. And you have your memory voltage overclock in here. Um, 
yeah, I found it pretty stable with plus 300. If I add more voltage, it didn't really add uh, that much performance. Even if I set it to plus 400, it just adds to stability, but the performance is... Uh, uh, it's not as I, I'd rather have a, a plus 140 core clock with a 300 uh, plus 300 memory clock. The balance is much better. Uh, the overclocking is slightly different compared to previous uh, with the Kepler compared to previous generations of NVIDIA video cards. Before you can just easily max out the core voltage and um, just adjust the core clock until you're uh, until you find one that it doesn't crash or completely stable. Uh, now they have something called the GPU boost where uh, you can adjust actually the, the offsets in here. These are not actually the actual values. They are offsets. Uh, similar to uh, think of uh, if you're familiar with Intel overclocking, uh, they have the base clock overclocking. This is essentially it. Uh, you, you adjust that and then the turbo boost kicks in. Uh, this one, uh, depending on uh, sometimes if you have just too much voltage, it actually throttles down the, uh, the performance, the core clock. So it is uh, the the your best since it is actually TDP based as well. So uh, your uh, ideal is to keep the temperature under under load uh, around 70. That is a sweet spot, uh, or below 70 if possible, because anything after 70 it, it throttles down the core clock. Uh, no matter how much you uh, put in with the uh, core voltage and the power limit, uh, I would suggest of course maxing the power limit so you have enough headroom to work with. And uh, also uh, here for the fan speed, you can see it's auto, it's 31, it's pretty quiet. I'm going to show you step by step uh, the, the fan noise uh, right now. As usual, it is uh, about 20 feet away from the camera. I'm going to shut up during this duration. And then after that, I'm going to discuss what the fan performance is uh, when you're overclocking. So I'm going to go over the fan speed. I'm going to take it off auto. And from 31, I'm going 10 steps until we reach 100. So you can compare. All right, that's pretty much 100% fan speed. And as you can see here on the right side, the uh, fan tachometer and RPMs, it is spinning at 4,200 RPMs, which is quite high. Uh, it was still quiet around 50%. Uh, it was beginning to be audible, but still manageable. And uh, you can see there, 50% is around 2,000 RPM. So the fan that is the, 80, the pair of 80 centimeter fans on the MSI JDX660 Ti Power Edition uh, they are quite powerful fans, even for uh, small fans, and they can they can spin as, uh, to 4200 RPM and cool your system uh, quite well. That is why here, if you're overclocking, I would actually suggest not leaving it at auto. Um, go to settings, and let's go back to the second tab. You can see the fan control properties here. You can set the, uh, the scale. What I had here was right before 70, I wanted to ramp up. I don't want it to ramp up immediately. I want it to give time to ramp up so that uh, while the temperature is increasing, uh, the fan speed is increasing as well. Uh, the performance is incredible when you're actually, uh, it's much better um, when you're overclocking and it's under 70. Uh, compared to just leaving it at auto, you're not guaranteed a, a, a stable performance, or rather a, a continuous uh, memory core clock. When you're overclocking it, you can actually see that the core clock has to uh, the the most the straighter the core clock is when you're when you say you run 3D mark not 3D mark but something constant uh, Unigine, 
uh, you will see that it is constant uh, Unigine 3.0 it, when you run it uh, and then you have your overclock here you'll see that it, it the, the core clock is in a straight line if your temperature is actually kept under 70 but if you have that if you don't have for example you don't have enough voltage you don't have a power limit and the uh, the temperature reaches uh, higher than 70 and reaches 80 sometimes you would see it will look like this a little bit more jagged it will dip sometimes so that is one of a uh, little tip at overclocking there are actually a lot of uh, uh, a lot of tips online you can you can uh, read other people's experiences this is just a quick primer this is a lot more complicated and will take a lot more detail to uh, and a lot more time to explain how to overclock with a Kepler compared to previous ones and uh, again let's take a look at the overclock I have here I have plus 50 core voltage I didn't need to put in a memory voltage actually I did a plus plus 20 here because uh, I left it at auto but when I actually uh, adjusted the fan speed a little bit uh, louder it, I didn't need to add, add a memory voltage to, to have a plus 300 stable with plus 140 core clock and uh, that is a pretty good um, performance boost you can see the results of the this benchmark at hightechlegion.com if you click on the link below my full review and uh, that pretty much covers this part of the review and I'll, I forgot to mention I might have mentioned it in the overview but uh, unlike other video cards the MSI GTX 660 Ti Power Edition has something called the uh, uh, the twin frozen let me try to remember what they call that feature but it pretty much uh, on boot up it will spin the card the anti-dust they call it anti-dust uh, prevention technology it will it's similar to a 6990 it will spin the fans up really fast before your boot in windows and that the, the purpose of that of course is that uh, for example uh, dust might have settled on the area on your video card if you have left it uh, turned off for a while so that what that does is blows away that dust in air so it ensures that your performance is uh, optimal especially for the fans and your cooling and that pretty much again covers the software portion and uh, we're clocking and the fan noise of our MSI Afterburner uh, our MSI GTA 660 Ti Power Edition video card and uh, let's go back to the review at hightechlegion.com you can click there you can see my temperatures there and the power consumption how much this card consumed you can also see the uh, performance difference in there when I overclock the card to this level and again thanks for watching and see you next time